Hello and welcome to some Star Citizen TLDR, going over the week's Star Citizen news and happenings and crunching them down into bite-sized chunks. Star Citizen Alpha 3.10 is in open PTU, but is extremely close to going live. We should see that next week, along with the Grey Cat Rock, the new mining vehicle, going on sale, but also potentially some other ships returning. We did also recently see a little leak on the RSI website of the Talon, some form of what appears to be Tavaran Light Fighter, which we don't know actually when it's going to go on sale but potentially that's next week as well we'll have to wait and see the latest 3.10.0 t patch fixed various bugs with scanning mineables and further reduced the singe weapon damage it looks like they're pushing those tachyon singes and mass drivers out of the meta beyond 3.10 with the roadmap the gray cat fps multi-tool cutting attachment has been removed temporarily from the roadmap as they focus on tractor beam um, module instead for that um, multi-tool so that's a little annoying because it looks less likely that we're going to have salvaging version zero this year something that i hoped we would the bearing br2 ballistic shotgun has also been added for alpha 3.11 it looks like rsi subscribers will be getting paladin armor or at least the helmets for the new suit uh, of armor that appears to probably be this month for its flare and um, they look very sort of um, cylon crossed with destiny 2 here. Uh, Inside Star Citizen this week looked at blowing up the Idris, which is pretty and big and boom. Lots and lots and lots of moving parts and shrapnel and cool stuff going on with that Idris when they blow it up. They also looked at the Grey Cat Rock mining vehicle, which is coming in 3.10, which allows you to mine new large and gem nodes and suck up those gems with its sort of like tractor beam hoover. Um, it's very similar, obviously, to that of the Prospector and other uh, mining uh, lasers and uh, extraction beams, but it's apparently much more of a tractor beam, uh, which is uh, cool because obviously they are working on tractor beams. We had a calling all devs on the Stanton system as well, which I'll go over in slightly more depth. So they are working towards finalizing the Stanton system. And part of that is finishing off the Celestial Bodies, Crusader and its landing zone, Orison. They are prototyping various bits for gas giants because Crusader is a gas giant. It's the first gas giant they've done in the game. They don't have all the volumetric cloud stuff they want yet, but they are going to build out Crusader and add more and more and more and iterate more and more on that gas giant tech later down the line. So they're building out with their current tech, expect it to be very Jupiter-like, but expect lots of iterations in the future. Orison is the floating cloud city there and it has its own unique challenges. It's very open and its views and vistas are incredibly important. They want the player to, to have very few restrictions in exploring that area on foot. There are various leveled platforms and balconies. Shipyards are a big thing here as well. That will then have the major sort of like astral bodies completed for the system but with each of the major gameplay loops that come online so whether that be uh, medical hospital gameplay whether that be salvage or uh, whatever they'll be adding those gameplay mechanics and functionality to each of the points of interest and landing zones and updating them for those mechanics sort of like in a modular fashion the stanton system will continue to get updates and improvements well beyond its completion of the celestial bodies and gameplay area as they add more encounters, gameplay loops, assets, points of interest, missions, all of that sort of jazz into the pool. They want any new tech or systems to also be showcased and integrated into the Stanton system where sensible. There is a lot they are working on currently for the Stanton system beyond Astral Bodies though. Grimhex is getting its race gameplay, a new mission giver, and various missions in the future. They are working on expanding stations out with cargo and refinery decks and facilities. Cloud tech that's going to be used for spacescaping rather than the gas giants and points of interest and that sort of stuff. That's being added in the game at the moment. They're sort of working out how to make these um, points of interest and interesting encounters using this cloud tech and nebula and all this sort of jazz. Monster closet or NPC schedulers, spawn lockers, they're being worked on as well at the moment. That's going to allow the spawning and despawning of NPCs in a more realistic manner. They are also looking at making space stations have more gameplay in general, opening up more areas so you can do repair missions or infiltration style missions where you will be able to get into the areas where the NPC hubs are or the internal server systems and the components because space stations are effectively like ships as well. They have internal component systems. This could have you access a station as well from vents or access points external to the station via EVA. 
They are hard at work on the pyro system as well. Planetary Tech is going to continue to receive prettiness updates and they'll be uh, integrating that. They uh, are able now to add displacement on a per asset basis, which will make um, a lot of the planetary assets look a lot better. They have updated painting tools, which gives them a huge amount more flexibility and speed of building out their planets and moons. And it's very important to remember that them building out the tools systems and the Stanton system and getting all of their tooling and assets correct allows them to build out the universe significantly more quickly. That they, they are literally focusing on the Stanton system and now the Pyro system to get two systems in the game. Once those are done, they should be able to build out a lot more systems a lot more quickly. It's still going to be a long slog to get um, like a dozen or so systems in the game for sure, but um, having all those assets uh, allows them to then build the rest of the game significantly more quickly because they have gas giants, they have um, the, the water planets, they have all the assets and points of interest and all the different biome types ready to go. And that's what takes the lion's share of the time, them making those assets in the first place and then building the tools for them so that then they can put them into the game. Also this week we saw a Squadron 42 roadmap roadmap. So this was a little bit of a what people would deem as a piss take, um, but it, at least it was um, a, an update. So basically they're not ready to update the Squadron 42 roadmap yet or to give us the new Squadron 42 video. It's going to be a new video series as well called The Briefing Room, which should be uh, a little bit more sort of like um, rough around the edges, just chuck sort of information at you, a little bit of an update on Squadron 42, looking at certain areas of it um, and giving us some information like that. So looking forward to that whenever it's ready and it will be ready when it's ready. The actual roadmap for Squadron 42 and the Persistent Universe are going to be seeing big updates apparently though. So they're going to have a much better breakdown of features being worked on in significantly more detail. So we're going to see um, stages of this with them explaining what's going on with it and mock-ups of that and then them showing us off it being being used um, actually by one of the teams and um, showing us off how that works for one of the features and then eventually we'll have the actual roadmap um, given to us. So a little bit of a, a piss take when it comes to it's a roadmap of a roadmap so that we can get a roadmap. Sometimes I just don't feel that Cloud Imperium are aware of the optics of what they say but um, it at least was an update and they said look it's not ready yet but uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to share at every stage of the new roadmaps process, um, what we're doing and why we're doing it uh, before it goes live with you. And sorry, that's not ready yet. Bam, they could have just said that. That would have been much better. But that's basically what they did say. But um, it just looked a bit weirder. I'm interested to know what you think, though. Are you excited for 3.10 going live potentially next week? Uh, have you been playing in the PTU? What's your experience of that? I'm pretty glad that they delayed 3.10 live this weekend uh, or didn't release it this weekend because it was a little bit too unstable uh, and there was obviously those blockers that they need to get solved for a, a good 3.10 experience and let's hope that we're going to have one. Um, were you uh, annoyed or did you find it funny that they have a roadmap of a roadmap for Squadron 42 uh, roadmaps now? Are you excited for them finishing out the Stanton system and working on the Pyro system? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a giveaway. For August, it's very Mercury Star Run the multi-role cargo data runner which is currently planned to be accessible and flyable in Star Citizen Alpha 3.11 and it's one of my favorite ships. To be in for a chance of winning that just comment on any of my Star Citizen videos made during August. More details down below. I'm a big old shill for NordVPN as well. If you are considering a VPN, Nord is cheap and effective. Two of my favorite things. It provides privacy, accessibility, security and is incredibly easy to use. I am not a fan of free VPNs but I am a fan of Nord. Use the links below for discount. Also, there's Shadow if you're looking for a gaming streaming service like Stadia or GeForce, but with the functionality of a whole gaming PC and Windows 10 environment that you can then stream to a phone, tablet, laptop, PC or uh, other appropriate device. Um, then check out the links below because it's a subscription service and you don't have to buy a whole gaming PC. Bam! If you wish to further help the channel, share the video, like, comment, subscribe, set the bell to be notified of my content, which is almost exclusively Star Citizen news and info. There's also the YouTube join button for those of you that wish to support the channel financially. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the verse.